Hello everyone, hope you're very well. My name is Bernadette Russell and I'd like to welcome you to episode 4 of How to Be Hopeful. And I've called this week's episode, If I Can't Dance, I Don't Want to Be Part of Your Revolution. Shamelessly stealing a quote from Emma Goldman, anarchist, feminist, political activist and writer. Because this week's thinking and chat about hope during lockdown and beyond is all about dance and dancing. And this week I'm speaking with a fantastic woman called Natasha Kanjani, who is the co-artistic director of Folk Dance Remixed, along with Co Fletcher, another amazing woman. They're a brilliant company who fuse hip-hop and traditional folk dance to live music, sometimes around an actual full-size maypole. Yep, they are awesome. Folk Dance Remixed are one of the amazing companies who've responded creatively and joyfully to lockdown. And here is the sound of their folk dance remixed Friday. <laughs> I love words, obviously, I'm a writer, so I better love words. But I can get chipped up by words sometimes too when they come out wrong or I just can't make myself understood or I can't understand. The last few weeks of lockdown have been full of words, beautiful poems and official announcements. We've been scrolling through written words on social media expressing joy, pain, rage, disappointment, grief, so many words. Some people use words on Twitter like the needles used by the bad witches in fairy tales. Sharp little pricks disguised as gifts to cause mischief to someone or another. And there we have words as weapons and also words as shields and gifts and comfort. And I love them all. But sometimes they don't seem enough or they seem too much. I don't know if you ever get that. Now the very night I finished the first draft of my new book, I went to do a turn at the wonderful variety night. That is Vera Chox and Charles Adrian's anti-Valentine's Day bash. In the show, Vera danced wildly and brilliantly and just invited us all to dance on stage with her. Now Vera is an amazing, beautiful writer and speaker and a performer. But she's one of the people who helpfully reminds me from time to time that sometimes it's just best to leave words behind and dance or move or just tear about. And maybe that's one of the reasons why exercising is so good for us. Natasha Kamjani is another person who always reminds me that dancing is great, a source of joy. Natasha is also a mum, and this week I've been reminded more than any other week of what parents are going through at the moment. As my friend said, there's not much time for quiet contemplation and deep thinking when you're looking after two kids, homeschooling and trying to do a day's work. So thanks to parents everywhere. When I clapped this Thursday night, Another group of people got added to my list of people who do deserve my gratitude, and that is parents, so thank you. Natasha Kamjani is one of them. Here she is. Yeah, so first of all, my lovely, could you just tell us your name and how you are? Hello there, my name's Natasha Kamjani and I am okay most of the time and slightly frazzled. Hashtag. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll come on to that. Yeah, no, it's, but it's good. It's really important to be honest at the moment, I think, about how we're all actually doing. Um, the first thing I wanted to ask you was to just... Um, because I thought I'd like to hear this story of how you and I met, how we first met and when. Can you remember? I think that we first met through the South Bank Centre. Um, I've got I, one of my companies that I run, because I'm always running loads of things, because you wouldn't uh, be like living in London if you didn't try to juggle about 25 projects if you're a freelancer. So the company I run with um, my friend Kerry Fletcher is called Folk Dance Remixed, and we were commissioned by the South Bank Centre to do a project called The Secret Garden up on the roof of the South Bank Centre. And we were, we, we, they would introduce us to you and Gareth as the writers. I was really excited about that because I love working with writers. And we used students from Lewisham College and I live next door to Lewisham College, so that was really handy. 
Um, and I've still got the pictures of that, and it was it was brilliant that project. So have I. It was so colourful, down to you two, bringing all that colour into the world. And I have still got Natasha. They gave us some seeds. Do you remember from the garden? Do and you? I've still got some of those seeds. Yeah. So I must plant. Actually, I shall plant them tomorrow in our honour. I should do that tomorrow. I've still got some of the woolly hats and scarves. Haven't they? <laughs> it was so. <laughs> there so... was some left over, and I was like, oh, I'll have them. <laughs> it was really colourful. Um, yeah, I was going to say to you, actually, and, I, and you've now reminded me that you do so many things, because one of the things I was going to ask you to talk about was um, your company and what you do. Would you mind sort of focusing on Folk Dance Remix? Because I know you've got loads, but just <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, my, my main company that I work with, I'm co-artistic director of Folk Dance Remixed. Um, and what we do is we, we fuse traditional English folk and folk from around the world with um, hip-hop music and dance, or the, the styles under the hip-hop genre, so the street dance styles, the locking, the house, popping, and we, we fuse that with the folk patterns and, and footwork. And um, we normally, well, right now, we should be on tour, um, tour in the UK. So we, we got our Arts Council funding this year, and was just when the lockdown was happening, we were due to start rehearsals the week after. So, um, yeah, so that, that's what I sort of mainly do. And we, we go out with our Maypole, we do our KD jams and street dance Maypole workshops. We have a show and it just brings joy through through connectivity, through holding hands. And, it's, um, it's, I can't it, express enough how much I love it. It's such, it like, those two particular styles of dancing are two of my favourites. And you two are just, I have this image from when we were at the South Bank Centre of you and Kerry, who's your co-artistic director, sitting like these gorgeous little naughty pixies underneath <laughs> this maypole, just looking cute and kind of gorgeous and a little bit scary all at the same time. It was absolutely brilliant. So we'll talk about that in the, at the end, about how people can find you. But um, just, just absolutely fantastic. Really, really lovely um, mixture of genres and absolutely joyous thank um, you and um, the one thing we'll come back to that in a minute but I wanted to sort of because this even though I didn't want this podcast I didn't know obviously know the uh, pandemic was going to happen and I was interested in talking about creativity in relation to being hopeful and, and positive I'm particularly right now sort of inspired by the creative response to COVID-19 from artists also from people that probably wouldn't even usually call themselves artists and I just wondered, before we talk about what you're doing during this period as an artist, um, if you have any sort of favourite creative responses that you've seen during lockdown and self-isolation, whether that's a big thing or a small thing, anything that's cheered you up? Well, I suppose my next door neighbours have really cheered me up because, um, funnily enough, one's a choreographer, one's a performer... One's a personal trainer and the other one works in sort of the more the technical side of theatre. And, and a couple of them were coming out every day doing what they call hashtag daily dance. And I, I was always like trying to do breakfast and making the pancakes and doing the dishes. And I just kept on looking at them and I'd pop out and go, God, that's really good what you're doing. I'm going to come out one day. One day I'm going to come out and I'm going to join you because that's, that's really good what you're doing. They were doing it via Zoom to some of their students, I think, that they teach. And one day I was doing the dishes and I was like, just sod it put the glove, rubber gloves down <laughs> in my slippers, went outside and I just start, I started joining in. And uh, my daughter came out with me, she's 10, and that was honestly like a week into lockdown. That was the best morning I've had all year. Like as far as we're outside, it was sunny day. We're dancing, I'm dancing, I always teach. So I'm not teaching, I'm, I'm joining in and I feel free and I feel under the sun and I feel we're outside and they're so positive and young and they're just brilliant so they've been I, I would say actually to you that my next door neighbours have really inspired me that's amazing Tash and it, that's been on Facebook hasn't it I think you've posted it has because um I joined in with them on that and then I was going to them, do you know what I think you you could do more with this I said you're on to something here and I said we, we should get the news out so I've got a PA and I've got a mic so we should get everybody out and then um we did so I did the warm-up and they did a routine and then we did it again this week. So it's the second week. We had about 25 neighbours and we chalked off um, in our muse, we chalked off like five metre pods. And even like this little two, this little three-year-old from number, she's from number seven, she didn't come out of her pod. She stayed in her pod. My little boy, Kehlani, he just tends to run 
So we take me and Sky to take it in turns to like rugby tackling back to our pod. <laughs> Finding it confusing, isn't he? Like, why can't I hug people? But um, yeah, so we've, we've got these like chalked off areas and um, we've got the whole news dancing now, which and every Sunday at 11. So that's... That's amazing. Really Where, whereabouts in London are you, Tash? I'm in SC4, not far from you, Bernie. Yeah, just round the corner. SC4 Broccoli, oh, yeah, it's, um, it's been a great community spirit actually going on around here, right in the sort of the red zone, really, aren't we, of, um, of, the, of the pandemic, really, and for, for, for Britain, where sort of London's been a bit of a hotspot, hasn't it? Yeah, but you're right, there has been it's such a beautiful uh, community response, particularly, I mean, I'm going to say particularly in South East London, because I'm a South East Londoner, but it does feel like there's loads of stuff going on here, doesn't it? Really lovely. Yeah. I think, yeah, there definitely is. I mean, it's always tinged with a bloody ambulance siren because we're right near Lewisham Hospital. So I think when I've been on, doing like stuff on work and I've, I've had to go and shut the window, I, I've been re- recording a lesson for some kids I teach in, in Hackney with Mimbre. And I'm like, um, I was like going through the counts without the music on. I'm like hearing a siren. I was like, oh, oh, let's quickly put the music on. I'm like, thinking I just need to cover that up. So that's been like, it's just a real constant reminder isn't it, at the back of your head that when you hear those sirens, it's pants. Yeah, 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 part of the, an unwelcome part of the soundtrack, hearing that maybe, being reminded of what's going on. Um, yeah, no, I was going to talk to you about that, actually, because that dancing on the doorstep, I wanted to tell you, because I thought you'd like this. So my mum's friend, well, well she's actually an in-law of ours, was she, Joy, her and her neighbours, who are all in their 60s and 70s, they've started in their little cul-de-sac in Hampshire, coming out on the doorstep and doing their daily exercise together. And I think some of them didn't know each other before this, so that's been like, super nice yeah. as well. It definitely, we, we've got a muse group actually, like in our where we live, and loads of us didn't know each other. There's all the parents all, always knew each other, but not not sort of the young professionals. So we're now we're all in touch, and I, yeah, I've seen other people doing it. Like one of my friends called Helen, um, I forget where, where from Dance East. We worked on a project, and she's doing one in, in her. I don't even think she's leading it, but. Is happening in her road, and I almost thought, God, we could be like Renter Street crew, couldn't we? We could go around with the PA. I'm trying to think of entrepreneurial ideas to keep my bank balance um, from going to minus, minus, minus. So in this in this time, I'm constantly always think I, I have a lot of ideas anyway, which sometimes is a pain in the ass. I'm like, oh, couldn't you like rent a, a dance? What did, what did you call it, Bernadette? You called it dance. You've given it a name, or what we're doing? Dance in the street, dance neighbours. What? Well, I did, didn't I? Dancing on the doorstep. Dance, doorstep dancing. Yeah. So you could come into business with us because you've come up with the name. Well, that's my gift. <laughs> <laughs> dance, dance. What is it? Dance what? Dance, dance doorsteps or dancing on the doorstep. Dot com. Yeah. Uh, good director, Bernadette Russell. No. So you could, no, that's yours, Tash. You no. could rent us out. <laughs> police would like it but you could we could literally travel around from road to road what we could do is part of that annual sort of celebration slash commemoration slash honoring of all the difficult things that have happened during this pandemic is have an annual dancing doorstepathon led by yourselves and kerry dancing (laughs) doorstepathon right that down um um, so the other thing i was going to ask you is apart from the dancing doorstepathon that you're doing. Um, have you got anything else going on as an artist? That you find, ways that you've found to be sort of creative, really responsive, that have been enjoyable for you as a dancer, as a choreographer, and as an artist, or just to sort of help money come rolling in? What have you been up to? Um, well, funny because I suppose every every time I'm feeling a bit crap, or I, I sort of really think about what's going on I, I keep saying to people like, I go into my dance bubble and I and everything feels okay so I've been going into my dance bubble as much as possible really and I was meant to be working for the South Bank Centre last week doing Beethoven 9 which was obviously the anniversary of Beethoven with Marin Allsop who who's a very well-known conductor who I've never met so I was meant to be working on that thanks to Susie Zump who's an amazing um animateur we work together a lot in the opera world don't ask me how that happened um and the South Bank Centre were great, actually, and, and honoured part of my fee, even though I hadn't completed it, which I was really appreciated. And they said, if you come up with any ideas, um, you don't have to, but if you wanted to come up with any ideas, we'd love that. So for the Easter 
for their Easter um, entertainment, I set up a family dance battle. <laughs> and I basically just filmed myself doing a warm-up, taught five steps, I wrote them down on a bit of paper and stuck it to my wheelie bin, filmed myself outside. And then Frank, my partner, didn't want to do it. He's not really into online stuff. So I made Skylar do it. She had no choice. And then obviously I've got my neighbours. So I was like, if, you know, if, you, if you're in your house and you, your family don't want to join in or it's just you, you know, maybe suggest this to your neighbours, see who you can get. So they came out at a distance and we, they learned the routine. We learned the routine and then, and then we faced each other. We did like a battle. <laughs> and then at the end of it, so I, we went, me and Skylar went and Bex and Ruth went. And then we each did a freestyle. And then that was the end of it. And nobody really won or lost, but we called it family street dance battle or it could be really neighbour street dance battle. Yeah. And I filmed it, edited it. Um, put lots of subtitles to it because my sound wasn't great. And we'll talk about technology, I guess, in a minute. But, uh, trying to be an artist and also be a technical wizard. Tricky. And uh, I sent it to them. I thought, oh, I bet they don't use it because I've just done it on my phone outside my house. And I put an egg box on top of a swing, my, my little boy's swing, as my camera stand. But they loved it. And they, they put it onto their blog and they sent loads of people that way. And it's, it's had a, quite a few hits on... Um, YouTube and it's still there and I'll, I'll probably pull it off and re-edit it so it's not just from the South Bank once they finish with it and push it out there because anyone can use it and a few of my daughters um I put it on them on her school you know WhatsApp group for the parents and quite a few of them did it and they, they said they were really crap dancers some of the mums or they're not confident they're not crap and they said it, they, it was easy enough for them to do so they were chuffed and they they really enjoyed it so I've got some lovely lovely feedback and then it just thinks oh at least you're putting a little bit of joy out there do you know what I mean and, that took me a, a fair few hours to film it, edit it. Mm. Kind of just did it, really. I didn't think too much about it, but it, it, I think it's had about 150 views, which, you know, in the That's good for me. No, it <laughs> is. And it's amazing considering there's so much out there at the moment, isn't there? There's even more out there. And I'll make sure that on the description of the podcast is the link to that, Tash, and all your other stuff. So if anyone's listening and they want to catch up, it'll be in the notes to, to the podcast. Um, well, I... The Remix Fridays thing is the thing that's, that's really sort of taken off. Oh, right. Tell me about that. Well, because our company, obviously, we're meant to be touring, I was saying to Kerry, like, um, of course, how can we sort of keep a presence? So Mimbre, who I teach for, they're an acrobatic company. Do you know Mimbre? Mm -hmm. They're amazing. They've always mentioned me, like Lena from Mimbre, and I think she's like a superwoman. Amazing. So they started a virtual warm-up class for their... their immediate company members and I um I've sort of invited myself really even though I'm not an acrobat and I, I and I was joining that every morning just to keep the company together and I said to Kerry I think we should do that although we've got musicians and dancers so it's a bit different so we did one pay we paid everybody for one rehearsal not much but out of our funding we thought let's do one zoom rehearsal and see how does that work because there's a delay we've got musicians we've got dancers how's that going to work tried it out and it sort of, some bits of it worked, some bits of it didn't. And then I suggested to Kerry, why don't we just check in with each other once a week via Zoom, not paid now, it's whoever wants to, whoever can. We'll do a warm-up together, and then we'll split off into... Musicians go into one of... Because you could split off on Zoom into rooms. So the musicians go into one room, dancers go into another, and we both work on the same section, and then we come back and we do it to the... We have an audio track running, and they play along to the audio track, with them themselves on mute and we dance along with just one person up and we found actually we we're able to sort of just do like a, a nice warm-up together have a chat talk we talked a lot about um what funding was available for artists actually and our beatboxer he was he's done loads of research he was really up on it and he really helped everybody so that was nice and um so there's I, also a place where you can all find support as well and help yeah, each other it was, out it was so nice and and then i said to kerry why don't we do well, this idea came into my head about Folk Dance Remix Fridays. Like we, could, we could do one video a week to showcase one of the company members to keep a presence out there. So I asked my friend Ben Moss to do the first week, and he's a dancer, Morris dancer. He's also a singer-songwriter, super talented, and he did the first week. Um, and that was with Mikey J from Boy Blue doing the track, and he plays two fiddles, like, like machine guns in a way, but beautiful violin fiddle with machine guns, just playing, and it's called um, a Single Thread. It's a really poignant song for now for these times and then I did week two and I did it with, with my neighbours and Skylar and I taught them a bit of the show and then I, I did like the, the, the bleepers like not the bleepers the outtakes when we're going yeah. wrong and the rehearsal process so I did the final cut and then all like it's a nine minute video so I was like oh well whoever wants to watch it 
Will and whoever doesn't just watch the first bit. But folkies love, they love things like that, so they tend to watch the whole thing. And that's had, I think, probably about 850 views. That's amazing, <laughs> Tash. And I asked everyone to share it, because I said our company are used to putting out joy and spreading a bit of happiness, and I want to keep that going. Yeah. So we... please share it. And people, like, flipping shared it everywhere, so that was great. Well, you do, Tash, as well, and I think a couple of things are really interesting for me. Um, technology I'll come back to in a minute, but via you and Kerry, I've really come to appreciate particularly dance because actually at a time, at certain times, words are really difficult. Knowing what to say is really difficult. Uh, knowing what to talk about without skirting near difficult things, if you know what I mean. So for me, and I'm not a dancer, but I love dancing, that dancing and moving feels like a, an incredibly beautiful thing to be able to do with people at the moment, which is past words and doesn't need words. Does that make sense? It does, but it's bloody hard to do a Kaylee without holding hands. But we did one on the video. You can see it. We're all like pretending yeah. to hold hands. Yeah, I suppose, yeah, because it's contact dance, isn't it? It is, but we found a way, because when Kerry and I remix the Kayleys, a lot of the time the folky version is holding hands and the funky version is not holding hands. So I was already used to adapting it. So then when we did it on the Folk Dance Remix Fridays, which you can see if you link it. Yeah. We did, at the end of the video, I just was like, come on, let's do a, let's just do the Kaylee. And we just, I just called it and we did it. And the neighbours were like, that was wicked. Didn't know you could do that. And <laughs> now I miss, I miss actually teaching Kaylee. And I never thought I'd say that. If you'd heard me 10 years ago and I didn't even know what Kaylee was. And now I'm like, God, there's a lot of power in bringing people together through dance, like what you said. And um, Yeah, there is. It's and weird. I also think what a beautiful thing that's happened in the last few weeks for all of us artists and everybody, because everybody has that power, don't they, to be creative and be artistic, is we, we're really seeing the value of art, I think. Um, and that's a little bit poignant as well, because so many of us have lost all of our income. But I just wondered if you think, if you feel at the moment that art sort of has a place, has a place in making this easier for everyone, and what, and what you think that might be. I think, I, well, for me, yeah, I definitely think arts, the arts has a massive place in just keeping people's minds on a positive frequency. Because, like, my daughter's gone to art, so she's, like, just doing loads of drawing and artwork. And for me, dance is an escapism, and it just, it just brings that feel-good, adrenaline-free, drugged vibe. Sorry to say that, but it's, like, it is free adrenaline, and... So it definitely brings that, and it's brought it even more so because I'm not always leading stuff now, so I'm I'm getting to join in stuff. Like, I've been joining in my next-door neighbours, and it's like, I just love it. So, and, and I hope it makes everybody, you know, the government and people that are in charge of funding realise how important the arts are because it just improves your mental health, full stop. And we were already facing so many cuts, and a folk dance remix runs on a shoestring as it is. And uh, make amazing things. I think we make amazing things happen, like we all do, for not very much, really. And people are always trying to get us to do stuff for cheaper or yeah, yeah. free. And it's like, hang on a minute. I mean, I'm doing the Folk Dance Remix Fridays thing for free, in the hope that it keeps our company on a platform. Yeah. In the hopes that it pays off eventually. But um, well, actually, hopefully, Tash. What I really hope for you is it will mean that lots and lots of people see it and are like, oh, that was wicked. I'd like to try it out in real life. You know. That's what we're hoping for. But I think we have to be, I think we as all of human beings, all of us as an artist and everyone that works in every sector, so I think we have to be positive but also real about what's going on because some of it's really difficult. And I don't think you have to immediately say, oh, everything's great, we're just fine, when actually there are some really difficult things going on. And one of the things I've been talking to yourself and other artists about is sort of acknowledging that. And I wondered if you minded, if it's not too... It, just to talk a bit about the impact that it's had on your company and you as a freelance artist and a mum in terms of what impact that's had financially, how that's made you feel in terms of your security. I suppose as far as the company goes, my business partner Kerry Fletcher and our manager Francis Watt, they, I mean, she, they did both put like hours and hours and hours of work into getting the funding and so we just sorted out a, a rehearsal schedule that's got like 30 artists on it that juggles which days they do and which days they can't. And, you know, to have that all wiped out overnight was just heartbreaking, really. And 
Kerry, I just really felt for her because I'm more the sort of, I, I guess, the show face of folk dance with me. So she, they, you know, they're the nuts and bolts and the, the people that, that keep it running. Without them, I would never do it. So that was really difficult. Um, as far as being a parent, it's extraordinarily hard to work from home as a freelancer because my brain's always on the work as well as I've got, a, I really want to nurture both my children and try this, you know, try to make the most of the home homeschooling. I've got a 10 year old and a two year old and my partner's not really into the homeschooling side, but he's amazing at loads of other things. So I'm, I'm trying to hold that. I'm trying to hold many balls and I feel like a professional juggler. And actually today, yeah, I, I definitely this morning woke up and just thought, I can't do it. I quit. I quit the juggling. And then I had to teach for Mimbra and I'm like, no, you can do this. And and, and, it, and I have really enjoyed teaching. And then Skylar got, she was outside with my neighbours drawing in the sun. And I thought, well, she can do the written stuff later on. She's, she's having a nice time. She's getting vitamin D. She's drawing, she's chatting to them. It's not me. There's two lovely, four lovely artists next door that she can have a chat to. So just whatever, that's the day. I wanted her to get up and do 30 minutes reading and 15 minutes online spelling shed and da-da-da-da-da. And uh, she's here now, actually. She wants to ask me. Hello, Skylar. Hello. Hello. I can't hear you. I think it's in the kitchen on the table. Your pencil case. Oh, <laughs> she's get back to drawing. It's very important. I've asked to do some cards because one of my neighbours um, uh, suffered a loss and I wanted her to do a card for my neighbour. So she, I've asked her to do that. And one of my neighbours also gave us some amazing cinnamon swirl buns for doing the dancing in the muse. Oh, my she gosh. Got, so me and my next-door neighbours who've been running it from at New Cross Buns, big shout-out to them, because they tasted like heaven. Heaven buns. Like, what a nice thing to do is, so Sheila, my neighbour, two doors down, ordered them for us because her two-year-old, her three-year-old joins in with us as a thank you. So I've asked her to do two cards, a thank you card for that and a thinking about you card for my num- na- neighbour at number 21 who, whose brother-in-law has passed away yesterday. So um, there's lots going on. There's lots of highs, there's lots of lows. There's lots yeah, of good things. I, think you're abso- things. I think you're absolutely right and it feels really important that we stay with each other and we talk about all of it because actually it's complex there's good things there's bad things sometimes there's a good thing and a bad thing in the same moment isn't that you said that in the same sentence as two really sad thing and a really yeah. positive thing in the in the muse happened today really or yesterday so no yeah i'm a bit up and up, up and down i have one of my friends um kate scanlon i don't know if you know she'd be a good person for you to interview scanners inc her name's kate scanlon she does monday morning um, like um, live feed on on Facebook, always to support artists. And I spoke to her, and she just said, "You have some up days and down days, and you just have to sort of go with it, don't you?" And I feel like I definitely have have up hours and down hours in the same day. Where sometimes I'm on a real roll, and then sometimes I'm like, oh, I, was, "I can't, I can't." But I've got a breastfeed in the middle of a, a Zoom meeting about a job. But I'm my little two year old's like boop boop because I'm like okay just tilt the camera up and hope for the best <laughs> yeah there's so much going on and it's all going on in our homes isn't it so it's all it's not like we have the other spaces to go into it's all going on but what sounds amazing as well about your experience Tash and it's to do with you and your amazing energy and your enthusiasm and your beautiful joie de vivre is, is all those lovely connections with your neighbours and all those really nice things. And I'm, I, I guess I'm interested in, because I'm thinking about hope, and I'm thinking about how we could harness any of the positive stuff from this and learn from the negative stuff, actually, looking forward to the future in a sort of hopeful way. If for you there's any, if there are any changes or any of the things that have happened that you're like, do you know what, I'd quite like to keep hold of that, whether that's, I don't know, you can hear the birds more or there's no pollution or whatever that is for you, if there's anything that's happened in the last few weeks, if there is anything that you are like, I want to keep that change, I'd like to keep hold of that. I suppose there's a few things. One is, yeah, I'm loving the less pollution because I've always got a cough. So when I go in queue in the shopping queues, I'm like literally almost crying because I want to cough because I've, I've got obviously vo- ripped up vocal cords from shouting over music for 20 years. So I'm loving, I can definitely sense a clearer air. I can, I can definitely sense that, and that's lovely. I love the, the connecting more with my neighbours, and we've got a cocktail hour week, we've got now. We're going to have 
in our five metre blocks. So we're going to teach on a Sunday at 11 and at seven we have a cocktail hour and pre-cocktail hour. Now one of the kids on the muse is really talented musically and then our, the dancing neighbours have got a keyboard. So they're going to bring it out, disinfect it and she's going to play and she does guitar and she does all like requests and then anyone else that wants to offer up something's going to do like Sunday night entertainment on the muse which is nice so that's really nice maybe we could keep that going in the summer months that's lovely that'd be amazing the, the selfish thing for me is i've got a vertebrae out of place since i had my little boy and i've always wanted to get to pilates classes and um i never can and my name my one of my really good friends from one of my first contracts and i joined a circus when i left college called natasha nother is doing a pilates class and she for injuries which is amazing and my my cousin natalie gillett who, who lives in Ibiza, is doing streaming free Pilates classes. So I've been getting to do Pilates every day, and it's really helping my back. So not having to travel somewhere is really convenient, and I would never really do classes online, but I would definitely keep that up. And I think, you know, for one of them, it, she is charging because it's her only income, and, I, and her classes are amazing, and I, I would. I would do it. I would subscribe. She's only ever free because it's all about who you know, isn't it? And my cousin... They're both just like it's a really positive way to start the day. Yeah. And just do they just do like body awareness and breathing and positive. It's just brilliant. So I would I would definitely love to keep doing that. Yeah. And I also you know, I'm very hashtag grateful because I'm in a, a really good situation compared to a lot, a lot of people. So all the things I've moaned about and stressed about, I feel like, you know, that's I'm just a privileged person really because I've well, gr gratitude feels like a really big part of it, doesn't it? From like, the Thursday night clapping for the NHS and sort of being reminded of who our, who we've got to thank. I know it sounds a bit sort of, you know, it sounds a bit worthy, but I'm really glad to be reminded of that, actually. I I'm grateful to be reminded to be grateful, if you, say, if you see what I mean. Yeah, I've worked for the, I don't know if you know, I've worked, do you know the Flying Seagulls? Yes. So I've worked for them a few times and I went out, to the refugee camps in Greece and I'm sort of keeping an eye on what's going on over there and um, you know when you think about people in other situations and what they're going through so it, you know we're, we're very lucky here at the moment in London let's hope it continues because we've got our grocery stores haven't we you know we've got Amazon we've got everything still well while the bank balances aren't minus 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 we can still do what we can do but um, we're talking about I don't know if you edit this in but talking again about the, the power of the Kaylee when I did a flying, when I was out in Greece doing work with the flying seagulls, I remember one of the highlights of that was doing a Kaylee. When I didn't speak Arabic, and um, we just we should did it properly. All... Um, could you just explain actually what the flying seagulls is? Just so in case. the flying seagulls is is a, a project run by Ash Perrin, and they're humanitarian clowns, and they go out and they set up amazing projects on refugee camps. And I went on one. Um, I've done a few bits and pieces for them, but and I'd love to do more, but it's hard with, with, with the kids. But I went on with, like, for 10 days, and we were in Greece. And um, one evening, because it was often we were entertaining the kids, but one evening it hit dusk, and it was a beautiful evening in October. I think it was 2017. And um, lots of the parents had come out, because he'd bought these fat suits, sumo wrestling suits, so they'd all come mm -hmm. out to watch. It was hilarious. And then these Spanish clowns turned up and they all had live instruments. And then Ash just looked at me and I was like, oh God, it's going to make me do a Kaylee but I'm I don't know, how am I going to do it? And then between the flying seagull, other clowns there and myself, we just looked at each other and I was like, right, we're just going to do this. And we taught a Kaylee, like an ongoing Kaylee, like a fusion of a few, with no words at dusk, with Spanish clowns, not rehearsed. And then someone came and brought loads of balloons. And it was just one of those absolutely, utterly magical moments of the power of dance and positivity and connectivity. And it was just a beautiful moment. And uh, a few people were in tears and the adults didn't often join in. And it was one of the moments I hold and I can't big up that project enough, the Flying Seagulls project with Ash Perry. There's another person you could interview like who's just flipping amazing. I don't, know, I don't know why we got into that, but we did. I just no, no. Well, it, uh, they're so, I, I do think they are connected, aren't they? Because obviously we aren't in a situation like the refugee camps. No, but, but, but we are in a situation that none of us have had before. And we are dependent on each other, aren't we? And we are in p peril in various ways and to various degrees. So I think, I think 
I think that there are connections there, but it's also what you said, Tash, about letting people know how powerful and joyful playing and dancing and music and connecting and holding hands with a stranger and mucking about is, you know, it's that really. We can even do it without holding hands because um, yeah. everyone's, everyone's smiling and laughing on, on our Sunday morning news um, warm up and the teaching for Mimbrain. I've got my own little school in Broccoli, DMPO with my friend Daria and we're still doing our classes online for them. We just kept them running for free through Easter because we just thought, well, whatever. And Daria, who runs the musical theatre, so I was doing all games and stuff and challenging the kids, and that's brilliant. And I'm just keep going. Even if it, there's not as many of them signing in, but I just think, well, even if five kids, you can bring a little bit of joy to five kids rather than there's normally 10 or 15, then I'll keep doing it. Well, that's oh. good, isn't it? Well, no, it's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. And um, do you... Um... Do you think, one, one of the big questions I've been asking people is um, a bit to, to sort of think about what they've missed. It's because a friend of mine said to me that she, she had an empty pasta jar. It was when pasta was nowhere, you know. She had an empty <laughs> pasta jar. And she started writing on pieces of paper the things that she wanted to do when she wasn't having to self-isolate. And she said it was interesting because on her pieces of paper were things like go swimming. They weren't madly big things. They were just regular things and I wondered what if you were to write pieces of paper in an empty jar what might you have what things do you think you've missed Tash I've missed going and hanging out with my mum having a cup of tea going to going to the theatre with her go to the theatre I've got a really good friend called Louisa Valenti we always we're theatre buddies and I miss doing that with her um yeah swimming like Scarlett always goes swimming and like Kehlani doesn't know how to swim so that's bonkers I'm, I miss, I think I miss walking into a room and being able to teach people face to face. I miss Kehlani being able to touch and cuddle and play with other toddlers. That's quite heartbreaking because he, as a two year old, almost two, just does not understand why he can't. He runs up to people and they back away and he's like, what? what does oh, that? yeah, yeah, yeah. God. And we, it was one of my friend's birthdays the other day, so we, we decided to drive around and all be separately outside her, ha- her flat and we played Happy Birthday, Stevie Wonder, and she popped her head out the window. And, but Kehlani recognised everybody. He was like, oh, oh, he wants to see, you know, his aunt, Auntie Daria and why, why, Uncle Dean, why can't I get my cuddles? And um, that was really hard. But, uh, yeah, I, I, it's... I guess what's nice, or what I, I like that, because although it makes you sad because things can't happen... We, they are coming back to us, those things. Being able to hug people and being able to see our mums, you know, they're, they're coming back to us, aren't they? And actually, I've really enjoyed realising that, that the real sort of joy and the pleasures of life are quite simple things. It's quite nice to be reminded of that. Definitely. You just want to be in a room and eat a cake and jig around and have a bit of a hug. I mean, I... I've also actually, I love staying at home and I never really stay at home. And actually, I, I really loved being at home and I love being around the kids all the time. And I've loved like going to work as in going down from the bedroom to the living room. It's like, oh, cause such a, cause such a quick commute. <laughs> finishing work and like, oh, I'm already here. So I've, I've, those, some of those things for me personally, as someone that's always on it, I've loved, I loved being at home. And I, I've loved being in my garden. I've got a tiny garden, but my God, I would never have spent so much time in it. And I'm loving it. And I'm like watering my plants and pulling the weeds. I've pulled it. Oh, yeah, I'm looking at snails. And Oh, yeah, yeah. You, you had a snail event the other day, didn't you? Big snail off. We, had, we, we got some cucumber and they seemed to really like that. So we had a bit of a, supposed to be on the phone to you, wasn't I? And I was like, oh, that's <laughs> I'm actually feeding snails. I can't talk to you right now. I'm really busy. <laughs> It's fair enough. Do you, do you think those might be other things? Do you think you could make changes for yourself in the future, Tash? So you, you are not, you know, some of that you can keep as well, like not working. I don't need to go out as much. I've always felt like I have to take the kids out. We've, we've got to go out. We've got to go to a museum. We've got to go to the park. We need to go somewhere all the time. And it's like, God, we can go to the garden. You can actually do a lot with a water sensory table, a bit of chalk and a snail. <laughs> eight, eight hours entertainment with that and I've got the front news which I'm really lucky for we could play football and frisbee there like for the rest of the day <laughs> we could go to the zoo or the park or wherever 
just I could spend a lot more time at home and less traveling and running around because I'm already working a lot as it is so definitely take that on board yeah I hope that we all learn from that I think there could be some really positive uh, more healthy life decisions from that um, this is a big one. This is the last, the last, amongst the, one of the last questions, but it's quite a big one. Um, sort of going back to hope, which is what I'm trying to investigate at the moment, as you know. What do you, uh, the question is, what do you hope for the future? What gives you hope? Um, what gives you hope that the future could or might be better? Um, what gives me hope for the future is, is I suppose, looking at, well, you know, it's like climate change is like right there, isn't it? Yeah. Like if we can make these differences um, so quickly when it's a pandemic, we should be doing that for climate change. Yeah. What the hell was that about? All of a sudden, homeless people are all off the street. Well, that should be done anyway if we've got the power to do that. For God's sake, that should be done. So in the future, it's like, come on, guys, wake up. Because if this is what this is like with the virus, what's it going to be like when there's no... When there's no um, clean air or there's no the, the the water levels have risen there's no there's no land so hopefully that will wake everybody up to the power of what you can do when you put your mind to it i think you're absolutely right we've literally seen it so it can't be denied that things can happen and and people support like that guy tom moore who you know like you know one person inspiring so many people to donate money it, that's amazing that people, you know, we can come together and, and make such a positive change. So people power, remembering that, you know, just because it's just you doesn't mean you haven't got power to change things. Like an individual can change things if you you start something, you really can. Like, that was amazing what he did. I think what you said about people power, recognising that we do have power, we've got agency, we can we can do things. And also what we've seen, I think, which is really hopeful is the news is filled with stories of people being really nice to each other and being really kind and being really generous instead of the news being full of stories of people being awful. So it feels like it's giving us hope back in each other. Yeah, definitely. And I, I, one of the things I was, I think one of the, when you asked the question or you emailed me the questions, and you were like, who, who's inspired you? And, I, and I, I'd say that one of the people that really inspires me is you. And I thought you might get annoyed with me for saying oh. that, but... <laughs> When you, but when you, you put a post up ages ago about on Facebook about wanting to put positivity out there, so instead of sharing negative posts or scaremongering posts, and this is before this, you were like, I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm going to share positive things, which is why I always share your posts, because I was very much a, I would share negative things as well or put negative things up. And I thought, you're so right. It's, it is so nice, actually, just to, to, like, whenever I see your name come up, I know it's going to be something positive. And um, when someone says to me, what are you doing tonight? I said, I'm doing a podcast with one of my inspirations. So you utterly are one of my inspirations. And I love, I've got some of your books, and I love them. And I love all the, those little cards you do to people, for your neighbours. And I think all the ideas you come up with, you're like a legend. You're so <laughs> a stated legend that, that should just be, I don't know, I just think you're brilliant and you're one of my absolute inspirations and I haven't got many. And um, I wanted to say to you, us. just thank you for being so, so positive and so hopeful and so you're like a little secret nugget of, uh, of, of, of hope yourself, to be honest. Oh, that's really nice. Thank you. Um, don't cut them out either. I want, I want to... Hear <laughs> Um, lastly, and really importantly, Tash, because people who have heard you speaking and there's a lot of information and I'm going to put all the links up, but if we wanted to find you, if anyone listening wanted to find you and or if they wanted to support you in your work in any way, what's the first stop best place to go? I suppose um, it would be Folk Dance Remixed is where the company lives and that where we've got presence on social media channels. And then I'm on Instagram as Natasha Kamjani artist and I've got my Natasha Kamjani YouTube channel but um, all of those things I've never really put much effort into my stuff it's more the folk dance remix stuff is big my website's been on my to-do list for probably 20 years and it's um, still on my to-do list because I seem to have no time but it is natashakamjani.com and that will take you to all those social media channels okay so we can find you I'll make sure the, all the 
things are there. And just as a last um, little thing from you, if someone's listening, they're like, do you know what? I'd really like to dance, but I can't really dance or I'm a bit rubbish at dancing. Um, what would you say to somebody who is thinking that? And what, what, what can dance do and why should somebody dance? I think that they have a go at something online. Try my family street dance festival. It's for absolute beginners. Dancing just gives you free adrenaline. It will, it will just make you come. It's like doing headspace or doing meditation. You have to focus on it so your mind can just relax with everything else. And you just have to focus on the moment, be in the moment. It's really good for your motor skills. It helps to prevent dementia. It works different parts of the brain than other skills do. It's a, it's a real it's exercise for the brain and the body. And it will just it will release happy endorphins, the same as eating chocolate. Whoa. Almost get your dance on, get your dancing shoes on. And if you want to do some more dancing, I could do something live on um, Facebook. Just let me know. I'll, I'll create something. <laughs> but, the, but the message is dance because it's as good as chocolate. It's, it's, yeah, it's on a level with chocolate. And I really am a big chocolate fan. But it really is tappy endorphins and that's free. It's free. There's loads of stuff online for dancing. Or look me up and I'll, I'll make you dance. talking to Tesh so inspiring and it really really made me want to dance and to paraphrase Emma Goldman who I mentioned at the beginning if I can't dance I don't want to be part of this lockdown and so I hope you join me I like to have a little invitation to action at the end of each of these episodes find your favorite song that might be a pop song that might be a classical song anything you like Play it loud, obviously I'm not inviting you to disturb your neighbours, but if you can, play it loud and just dance, go wild, go crazy and lose yourself in having fun and dancing. Even better if you're lucky enough to live with someone, dance with them, dance with kids, they're the best at dancing, everybody knows that. If you can dance in the garden, maybe you can get your neighbours to join in, as Tash has done. And just before we go, um, the last little thing you'll hear is Tash and her neighbours and her daughter just going through a few of their steps, a doorstep challenge. <laughs>